They're focusing on the main roads. That way, if there's any emergency crews that need to get out, they can do so. What just happened was the front part of the building collapsed. They say they had no idea what this man was capable of. We actually just found out overnight that he was an amateur MMA fighter. Really coming down fast out here in Sevier County. Very powdery, very beautiful, but very dangerous driving conditions this morning. We are just off Highway 66. Well, victory for people against abortions in Ohio. The heartbeat bill has passed the House. This home behind me sat vacant in dire need of repair until Habitat for Humanity stepped in and now single mother Jennifer Brown has this newly remodeled home just in time for Christmas. Let's go check it out. Here's what's happening right now at the federal building in Knoxville. As you can see, a large crowd of people shouting, chanting. Hello, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. We're having a good old time here this morning. I'm Kayla Strayer. The suspect is still on the run, though. We will let you know more information as soon as we get it in. But the important thing is that little girl is going to be OK. The park is empty on this side. But let me step over here and show you all of these lovely Dolly fans. <laughs> This is 29 year old Matt Bell. He has been on and off heroin for nine years. He's been sober for 15 months. Right now, he's working with local recovery group Team Recovery to open a detox and recovery center in Lucas County. It will be based on these substance free methods that he says worked for him. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't think that I could stop using heroin. Addicted to one of Toledo's deadliest drugs, Matt Bell tells me he felt like he had reached a point of no return. And when I looked in the mirror, I didn't recognize myself anymore. Things weren't always that way. The former college athlete hurt his shoulder playing baseball. At 19, he had surgery and then started taking pills to help the pain. The Oxycontin got very expensive and um, unfortunately heroin was more readily available. It was cheaper. The drugs turned him into someone he wasn't, landing him behind bars multiple times. I had pushed everybody away in my family. My friends, I was completely alone and I was miserable and I'm just not that kind of person. That's when he reached out to DART, Lucas County's drug abuse response team. Lieutenant Robert Cromick heads up the program. It uses treatment to get addicts off drugs and out of jail. These are high risk individuals that are on the brink of either dying or committing serious crime to keep their, their addiction going. Cromick says more than 2,000 people overdosed on opiates in Lucas County this year alone, yet there are less than 40 detox beds. I'd much rather bring somebody to a home and say this is you know how well your son or daughter is doing then show up at a funeral home and offer my condolences. And that's why Team Recovery stepped in. They're turning this mommy building into the Midwest Recovery Center. It will have 22 detox beds, and workers will not prescribe opiates like Suboxone or Methadone. And we need to stop sugarcoating it and, and substituting one drug for another. Instead, they will use therapy and a 12-step program, an approach that Matt says helped him get clean. We're going to do it the right way, and we're going to try to address it and, and, and put a solution on it. The Midwest Recovery and Detox Center is scheduled to open this spring. They will treat any kind of substance abuse addictions as well as mental health disorders. For more information, including insurance coverage, visit NBC24.com. Sirens buzzing, people waving, kids coming by the busload. It's anything but a typical day at Meyer on Alexis Road. On Monday, the nonprofit community outreach Feet on the Streets had their 8th annual 12 Kids of Christmas event. Whoa. Children in need are going on a shopping spree with Toledo police officers and local military members. This year, some patients at Toledo Children's Hospital get to take part. It means the world to Jessica Henneman, mother of six-year-old Amanda and 12-year-old Joseph. My kids um, are in and out of the hospital quite a bit because they're cystic fibrosis. My son was just recently discharged. Um, he had pneumonia going on pretty bad. Joseph and Amanda are paired up with TPD officer Eric Welling and his wife, Sarah. Two great kids and their mom seems 
like she really loves them and cares about them. So that makes it more special to us. The way I see it, if I'm down, my kids are down. I have to be strong for my kids. Sarah works at the hospital, helping children who have cystic fibrosis. It's a hard disease because it consumes so much of your time. But today, their time is consumed by shopping for their Christmas gifts with the officers. <laughs> we have four kids, so we know how excited they get around Christmas time. And, and to come here and, and help these kids enjoy Christmas a little more really is uh, something that I enjoy doing on my time off. I really like it. So what started as 12 children eight years ago has now turned into 200 children walking the aisles of Meyer with the police officers getting really anything they want. I got a sweatshirt, um, a snowboard. This little girl getting an elf on the shelf. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time for the kids to, today to make their Christmas a little bit more brighter. Reporting in Toledo, Kayla Strayer, NBC 24 News. December 2nd, 2014, a dreary day in Knoxville, bringing images our community will never forget. Emergency responders, frantic parents. I thought I was going to pass out. These now mangled school buses, once filled with innocent children. The Asheville Highway bus crash, killing three people from Sunnyview Elementary School. Seven-year-old Soraya Glasper, six-year-old Zykea Burns, and 46-year-old teacher's aide Kimberly Riddle. Comfort us all. The mom of Zykea Burns. Burns sharing hugs and encouragement at a candlelight vigil. I just want the, the other families to know that we are grieving with them. We've shown you how East Tennesseans are helping each other since that day. A memorial at the crash site filling fast, children writing sympathy cards and donations for the victims' families. At Soraya's funeral, her mom Sharon Glasper sharing mixed emotions, calling her daughter by her nickname Bubbles. I know she's happy and I know she's she left happy, um, but there's questions why. Six months after the crash, Sharon Glasper is still waiting for answers. I hold up for the, from the support that I get, but when I'm by myself, I'm, I'm down. Daryl DeBusk with the Knoxville Police Department tells me this case continues to be a priority for them. We have uh, several investigators that are working on this. We have one lead investigator that uh, for the most part that's always been working on since uh, the bus crash occurred. Searching every square inch of the buses, trying to find out just what caused bus 44 to swerve over Asheville Highway, crashing into the side of oncoming bus 57, sending bus 57 on its side slightly down the highway. The main questions police are trying to answer, was it human error, medical problems, mechanical issues, or a combination of reasons? Our priority is to the victims and the victims' families, and we want to make sure that we do our job accurately and that we find out uh, exactly what caused this so that we can inform them, they can get some closure, and we can move forward in the investigation and, and prosecution if it comes to that. While detectives do their jobs, Sharon's focus is on remembering bubbles and the last time she saw her smile that December morning dropping her off at school. I signed her in and she was like well um, I was like I love you she's like mom and I was like I love you she's like mom I love you too. And she walked on down the hallway with that smile and that was the last, that was the last smile that I had seen and I will never forget. Some Michigan workers will be seeing a bump in their paychecks starting next week. Michigan is one of 19 states set to raise their minimum wage in 2017. That's some great advice. And with my little brother serving um, in the Navy, he wasn't able to spend Christmas with us. So this year, uh, I mean, he's coming home in a few days, thankfully. But good. definitely, family is what matters. We are taking a closer look at how the VA is trying to reduce opioid painkiller use among veterans. Today, hundreds of survivors will join thousands at that site to honor and remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice.